Hi, thank you for joining this CNI Fall Membership Meeting Project Brief on Machine Learning for GIS, the ML4 GIS project, uh, striving for scalable processing of scan map images. Uh, I'm Michael Shensky. I'm the GIS and Geospatial Data Coordinator for the UT Libraries at the University of Texas at Austin. And I'm presenting today on behalf of uh, my project team, including Donna Garari uh, and Aaron Choate. Uh, this work was supported by Good Systems, a research grant challenge at the University of Texas at Austin, and really excited uh, to talk to you today about this project. Um, first, I want to give a little bit of background uh, about what led to uh, this project, uh, which started in the fall of 2020. Uh, the motivation really came from the fact that the UT Libraries manages a growing collection of uh, over 60,000 scan map images uh, that currently need expanded metadata and uh, need uh, to be georeferenced in order uh, for us to uh, improve discovery and access to these valuable resources. So really our goal was to um, enhance these scan map images in our collections uh, so that we could add them to our Texas Geodata portal and make them easier to find for um, uh, our campus community as well as members of the public. Uh, one of our challenges uh, that we were facing is that uh, you know, we have this very large number of maps, um, tens of thousands that needed to, to still be processed. And um, if we were to, to try and process these maps manually, um, you know, we, we did a little bit of math to try and figure out how much work that uh, might require. And if we estimate that about 15 minutes is required to manually georeference and develop metadata for one map, uh, it would take almost eight years for a single person working 40 hour weeks to process all 60,000 of these maps. So it's a, a very long period of time uh, with, you know, uh, even in the, in the best of situations where, you know, there'd be dedicated staff support just for this effort. So we were really interested in, uh, you know, trying to see if there's anything that we could do to speed up this process, make it easier, um, and perhaps uh, automate it so that um, it would be less manual work um, overall. So our project goal was to really accelerate the processing of these scan map images by initially leveraging crowdsourcing to produce map annotations uh, that can be processed to then generate metadata uh, to georeference scan map images. And ultimately our goal, um, uh, long-term goal through this project was to uh, train machine learning algorithms to process new maps um, without requiring uh, much manual intervention at all. And so that is what we are hoping to get through through uh, this project, which was envisioned as a, a multi-year project. And um, uh, really what I'll be uh, speaking about today is the, the first year of this project and what we were able to produce and our plan for um, the years ahead. Uh, I do want to introduce our project team. Uh, so uh, we had um, uh, two uh, people from the libraries, myself included. Um, that uh, brought to uh, this team really, uh, you know, a, a really extensive collection of uh, you know, uh, tens of thousands of scan map images, uh, as well as experience with metadata development and experience with georeferencing scan map images, which would make them more um, uh, useful in GIS software, easier to use uh, in, in geographic information system software. And uh, really, that, that's, that was a key goal for us, is uh, taking these uh, maps in our library's collections and getting them to a point where they could be um, useful in geographic information system software, which is what many uh, members of the campus uh, community are using for uh, geospatial research. We also had um, uh, involvement from the UT iSchool. Uh, University of Texas at Austin High School. And there we have strong experience with developing annotation interfaces and familiarity with crowdsourcing platforms, which is really going to be integral to the success of this project. And we're also fortunate to have project team members from the city of Austin, um, where they have um, uh, their own uh, unique uh, collection of scan map images, and, and in some cases, very complex map images that also were in need of georeferencing and metadata. So um, they were able to, to bring uh, these unique use cases and, and unique maps um, to the table as well that, that were going to be helpful for us as we tried to, to develop a really generalizable workflow that could work for a variety of scan map images. Uh, our first step really was, um, uh, you know, figuring out how we could facilitate 
the annotation creation process. So when we're looking at scan map images, we um, you know, have tried other approaches before, uh, mostly using geographic information system software itself to try and, and georeference images um, and create metadata for uh, scan map images. And that, that process can be a, a little slow working in, in GIS software. Um, it's, it's not really possible to crowdsource that process easily using uh, GIS software. And so we were looking to develop a new annotation interface that would um, uh, allow us to uh, have some additional flexibility with how we really wanted to, to move forward with crowdsourcing the annotation process for these scan map images. We wanted this new annotation interface to be customizable, uh, to allow us to include built-in instructions, which is gonna be really important if we are trying to crowdsource uh, the annotation development process so that uh, users who maybe had, had never done this work before would be able to uh, understand uh, the workflow, uh, be able to, to see examples of what we're you know, looking uh, to see produced in uh, regard to annotations. We also wanted to have support for multiple annotation types. So we wanted it to be very specific to um, the, the types of materials that we were processing in our case, scan map images. We wanted to be able to customize the interface so that we could uh, specifically uh, have users of this tool pick out um, specific um, uh, items or elements or pieces of information uh, from a scan map and identify those as um, you know, particular things in the map that uh, you know, we were hoping would uh, be things that could be identified and then information about those elements can be extracted. We wanted this to be really easy to use. Again, this was going to be really important uh, if we were hoping to roll this out uh, to users who didn't have previous experience working with scan map images or annotation. Uh, we wanted it to be quick and responsive, uh, so we, we really wanted this to be a, a little bit faster than you know, what the annotation process might look like um, in GIS software or other tools that are, are more multi-purpose tools. This uh, annotation interface is really designed to, to be streamlined and, and focus on solely um, facilitating the creation of annotations. And we wanted to support a wide variety of maps. So there are, uh, you know, it, among the tens of thousands of maps in our UT libraries uh, collections, most of which are coming from our Perry Castaneda library map collection, there are many different uh, map collections and map series that are uh, part of the larger collection. And, uh, you know, the, each of those maps um, is, is so different that we wanted it to be very um, uh, adaptable so that um, we could uh, use it to support annotations for um, a diverse selection of maps. And what we see here in the screenshot on the right is a um, uh, image of the annotation interface itself and the, the tutorial that we are able to build into the annotation interface to provide instructions for users involved in the crowdsourcing process so that they could um, you know, see clear instructions for what we are hoping to uh, achieve um, through use of the tool. And here we see a, an overview of our planned workflow. So our goal was to uh, assemble these scan map images and organize them, uh, prepare them for annotation um, and, and get them to the point where they could be loaded into the annotation tool. Uh, the next step would be actually uh, processing uh, those annotations and, and taking uh, the annotations that were created by uh, our crowdsourced users. And then um, uh, which, uh, would be exported from the tool itself in a standardized format. And in this case, we decided to use JavaScript object notation. Um, and to then use uh, the scripted process to generate metadata uh, from those annotations and to also georeference the maps from the information that we were able to extract from the annotations. And then use that uh, then uh, resulting georeferenced scan map image as well as the metadata that it has been created for it to then um, uh, add that map to our Texas Geodata portal, um, which requires um, that, that maps be georeferenced and have uh, metadata created for them before they can be added to the portal um, to, to really make those more discoverable. So while our 
uh, scan map images are, are currently available uh, on our Pericastaneda Library map collection website. That, that website doesn't provide search functionality um, because of very, very limited metadata that's available for many of these maps. And so by creating this metadata and uh, georeferencing the map images, we can make them available through this um, more robust portal that, that makes it easier to search and browse for maps. And so that was a key goal for us. Uh, here we see uh, two screenshots uh, really zoomed in pretty close on the annotation interface uh, and you know we're looking specifically at uh, annotations that uh, are in the process of being created and I want to talk a little bit about how we are planning to use app annotations specifically to create metadata and uh, in georeference maps so our plan is to um, use uh, annotation information um, uh, that is uh, specifically identifying sections of the map that would be useful for the creation of metadata. And so here on the left, we see a section of a USGS a topographic map um, with an area highlighted that contains information that would be useful to include as metadata for that scan map image. And so we can see that uh, a rectangle has been drawn around it, which we see represented in red. So that is the area of the annotation on the scan map image. And then above in the white box, we see uh, that it has been identified as an area of metadata on the map. So that is the label applied to the annotation. And then we see below that, that the text that is present on the map uh, has been typed in manually by the person using the tool so that that information then um, is added to the JSON file. Uh, JavaScript object notation file that contains all the annotations for the map. And then this information can be extracted using a, a Python script and then used to create metadata um, in, in the formats that we are looking for. So we're, we're using ISO 19139 XML metadata for our scan map images currently, as well as GeoBlacklight schema metadata, because that is the, um, we, we use GeoBlacklight to, to power our uh, Texas Geodata Port. On the right here, uh, we see an area of uh, the same map um, that has uh, been identified as containing uh, latitude and longitude coordinates. So the, the specific point on the map that has those coordinates uh, has been identified with that red rectangle or a, a diamond shape rather. And we see that the annotation for this has been um, classified as a label and as coordinates, and the coordinate information has been entered there by the, the user of the annotation interface. So in this case, uh, this annotation would also be added to the, the JSON file that is produced once uh, map annotations for scan map image are saved. And then this could be extracted based on the, the, the coordinate label from that JSON file and then used to georeference the map using an automated process. Um, if, as long as we have a, a few of these points for each map uh, where we know the, the coordinates um, uh, on the earth that that point on the map corresponds to. And we know the uh, pixel coordinates in the image, the scan map image, uh, we can uh, relate those two. So we can relate the, the pixel coordinate in the image to the, the real coordinates um, that specify the location on Earth and, and georeference the map uh, using an automated process just based on the annotation. So these are our goals for um, using the annotation information created through this new annotation interface to develop metadata and to georeference our scan map images. Uh, this is our overall timeline for, for uh, developing the interface and, um, and getting it to a point where you know, we'd be ready to deploy it um, in a crowdsourcing environment. So uh, in the fall of 2020, we were really focused on building out the requirements for the annotation interface. Uh, from January to August of this year, 2021, we developed a prototype of the annotation tool. And uh, between August and September of this year, we um, uh, wrote documentation uh, for the tool and uh, performed testing to verify that it, it met uh, the requirements they had established um, uh, the year prior. And so that is really where we're at now. We have a functional annotation tool that, that has documentation. Uh, the source code for the tool has been uh, published to GitHub. Um, and it, it's available at the link that we see here on uh, this slide. It's been developed with React.js and Node.js. 
Uh, it's designed to be fast, easy to use, and customizable, again, meeting the requirements that we had set out um, at the outset of this project. And it can be run both locally um, on a computer of you know, users uh, uh, here in the UT libraries, for instance, or it can be deployed in Amazon Mechanical Turk uh, for crowdsourcing. And so the fact that we can run it locally and use it in a crowdsourced environment is, is really important for our plans moving forward, as I'll mention here in a moment. Um, so uh, very quickly, I want to give a short annotation demo so that we can see a little bit uh, more about how this tool works. And I'll, I'll quickly demonstrate how annotations are created, how they're saved uh, in the JavaScript object notation format, um, how it can be used to process multiple maps, and how the, the interface can be customized, and how we can customize the list of maps. Um, that is presented through the annotation interface. So I'm going to quickly exit the, the presentation slides here and switch tabs to show the interface itself. Uh, and so we see when the, the interface is started, it is running uh, in my browser. And at the top of the annotation uh, interface, we see that we have a tutorial uh, that users who are maybe using this tool for the first time can reference. So this is uh, you know, particularly pertinent uh, once we deploy the annotation interface in a crowdsourced environment like Amazon Mechanical Turk, those users will need to review these instructions in order to understand how to use the tool. And so this is all customizable. Uh, there is a JSON configuration file um, that is included when the application is downloaded. So we can modify this as needed uh, to you know, improve the tutorial over time or customize it for certain types of maps that, that maybe we're processing in batches. So there's a, a lot of flexibility here. Uh, for those that have finished the tutorial or are already familiar with the interface, um, they're able to go in and start adding annotations using the tools that are available here uh, in the left-hand column. So I'll zoom in uh, on the map so we can look and get a closer view of things that we might want to annotate. So I know we're a little limited on time for this pre-recorded session. So what I'm going to do is just add an annotation that matches with the example uh, that I mentioned earlier. And so we see that we have a the corner of the map has clearly identified coordinates. I'm going to add a coordinate annotation here. And I'm going to type in the coordinates that I see um, in latitude and longitude format. So I'll enter 3, 1, 5, and 9, 4, 4, 5. So I've recorded the latitude and longitude, identified this annotation uh, as a pair of coordinates. And I'm going to click OK. So that annotation has been created. I can also. Um, use a, a different type of annotation, identifying a rectangular area uh, of the map. And here, instead of using a point, as we saw for the previous annotation, we have a rectangular area that's being identified. And I'm going to identify this as the title of the map. And I will type in Douglas Quadrangle. And now we've had a second annotation added. And so we can uh, go through and, and annotate uh, many different things that we see uh, in each map. So we can annotate the, the title. We could uh, annotate coordinates. We could uh, annotate labels that we see present in the map if there are things that we want to identify in the map itself. I'm going to uh, quickly pan down here to uh, the, the lower region of the map and see some of the other things that we might particularly potentially be interested in here. Again, we see um, you know, information that might be useful for the creation of metadata. We have scale information, legend information. All of these things are, are potentially useful to us and things that we might want to have folks uh, annotate in a map. And our goal is that if we are able to uh, develop annotations for hundreds or thousands of maps, we might then have a sufficient data set that we can use to train a machine learning algorithm to then automatically identify these same types of features in maps that have not been manually processed. And that would save an immense amount of time if we can get uh, to that point. And so that's our, our long-term goal with this project. Now, uh, here we just processed a, a single map image. Um, and, and let's say those were the two annotations that we wanted to add here. And in a real scenario, we, we would add uh, quite a few more. But what I would do uh, if I'm done with this map is click the Save button. And then down here at the bottom of the screen, I'll click 
the button to download the, the results. Um, and so here is the JSON file that I've mentioned. I'm going to quickly open that so we can see what this looks like. And uh, you'll see there's a lot of, of information in here. And that's because all of the maps that are set up to be processed with the annotation tool are listed here. So we see a lot of maps listed that, that we have not yet created annotations for. But if we look closely up here at the top, we see the annotation information uh, that we've entered for this map. So here we see that uh, the Douglas Quadrangle that we identified as the title of the map uh, is mentioned here. And this is all you know, standardized formatted JSON. We also see the, the coordinates annotation that we added up here. So we can process this using a Python script and extract the information for the coordinates, extract the information for things that would be useful for the creation of metadata, um, and, and do that in a very standardized way because of how these annotations have been set up. So this is uh, going to be really useful to us since we, we've automated many other uh, similar processes using Python before, but we just haven't had great metadata or great um, coordinate information for our maps to work with. Um, and so this solves that problem for us, right? So right now we're hoping we can uh, collect this information through manual processing of the maps, um, through crowdsourcing, and then eventually get to the point where we can use uh, machine learning algorithms to, to do this type of work for us. And just very quickly, I will uh, you know, show you uh, the other maps that, that are currently set up to be processed here. So we see a variety of other map types um, that can also be handled by uh, the annotation interface. In this annotation interface, as I mentioned, is uh, very customizable. So here we see the list of maps that is currently set to be processed. So we can modify the, the links here. Uh, if there were new maps that we wanted to add to be processed, we would just add those in as additional uh, items in this list. And again, this is JSON formatted. Um, and so it's, it's, it's really easy to customize and modify. We also have the customizable tutorial here. So if we wanted to add new steps to the instructions, we could do that in this area. We can uh, determine which annotation tools are activated when the annotation interface is displayed. We can also uh, determine what types of annotation labels are available in that drop-down menu that appears when an annotation is added. So there's really a lot of fine gearing control that we have with this interface. And so it's really gonna benefit us moving forward. All right, so very quickly, I know we're, we're running a little short on time. I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the presentation slides and uh, just discuss a, a, a final few things um, that I think are important to mention about this project. So first I want to go over our next steps. So in the current academic year, 2021 to 2022, we are um, hoping to process about 500 maps in-house by running the app locally. Uh, so we'll have library staff members um, go through and very carefully generate uh, all the annotations for about 500 maps that we think are important to record. We then hope to deploy the ML4 GIS annotation tool in Amazon Mechanical Turk to gather annotations for the same um, maps that we've processed locally. And then we hope to perform a quality assessment of the crowdsource data using the in-house annotations as a baseline. So we want to be able to assess how accurate those crowdsource annotations are. Can we rely on them um, to, to really train an algorithm to identify these types of features that we're interested in in scan map images. Uh, and if so, our next step in the following academic year, 2022 to 2023, would be to generate annotations for several thousand maps using a crowdsourcing approach. Uh, so scale up the, the annotation creation that way uh, for several thousand maps and then use those annotations that are, uh, you know, we're assuming will be of um, uh, you know, sufficient quality to train a machine learning algorithm to identify that those same type the same type of information in new scan maps that have not been manually processed. We'd then like to utilize that algorithm to generate annotations for the tens of thousands of maps remaining in our collection that uh, would not have yet been processed, and then use those uh, annotations that are, are developed uh, using this algorithm to then georeference our map images and generate metadata for them so that they can be added to our Texas Geodata Portal and made um, uh, available to our, our campus audience um, through that, that portal that, that makes uh, the maps much easier to find and utilize in geographic information system software. Um, I, I uh, want to make sure to acknowledge uh, all the others that have uh, played a key role in this project. Um, uh, Alyssa, Jean, and Patrick Chow were uh, absolutely integral to the development of the ML4GIS annotation tool um, and, and worked with uh, Donna Garari from uh, the UTI school to 
um, develop uh, the annotation interface that is really core uh, to the, the foundation of this project. I also want to thank our project partners at the City of Austin, and the Austin History Center, Ross Clark, Jennifer Hecker, and Mike Miller uh, for their involvement, their feedback on the annotation tool, um, and their um, uh, contribution of maps from their collections uh, that we have used to uh, test the tool. Uh, I also want to, again, thank um, Good Systems, a research grant challenge at the University of Texas at Austin for the project funding uh, that, that made this project possible. And I want to, uh, again, uh, share the, the link to the source code if anyone's interested in uh, taking a look at this annotation tool themselves. Um, and I also want to provide my contact in information if there are any questions about this project, if anyone is interested in, in learning more about the work that we're doing moving forward uh, with this tool. Uh, I would love to hear from you and I would be glad to answer any questions that you might have. And with that, I'll, I'll conclude this uh, presentation. Thank you again for, for watching this. Uh, really appreciate it and hope you enjoyed learning about our ML4GIS project. Thanks. <laughs>